Chapter 18. Some books are far safer than others. Book wandering is the ability to travel inside books, and only a few readers can do it. You could say we can read a bit harder than most people. Something tips us over from visiting the books purely inside our imagination to being physically transported there. We still don't know how precisely it happens and why book wandering magic affects some people and not others. We think any reader probably has the potential to do it, but perhaps predictably there are very high numbers of booksellers or librarians, as book wanderers almost always have a very special or particular relationship with books and reading. It's this intense relationship that first starts pulling characters out of books, and why your first book wanderer is normally into a book you have an affinity with, which is why it's more unusual to find out that you are also able to travel into Anne of Green Gables, Oscar, even though you've never read it. Pulling characters out of their stories into the real world is actually more of a side effect, but it is almost always the way we first realize someone has a book-wandering abilities. And so far as we can tell, book-wandering always takes place in a bookshop or a library. So I pulled Anne and Alice out of their books without trying, Tilly asked. How come I've never done that too, Oscar said at the same time. I know you're going to have an awful lot of questions about this. But most of those questions will be covered in our introductory section session with one of the librarians. I expect they'll be able to do it in a way that's more manageable and enjoyable than my fact dumping. Actually, do you think we can squeeze one in today, Amelia? Amelia gave a small nod and went over to her desk to make a quiet phone call. They will be able to teach you how to control your book wandering, Granddad went on. The underlibrary exists to protect readers and our stories, and we have important rules in place to help do this. And I'm sure you can imagine some books are far safer than others to explore. We've had some pretty close calls in the past when people have pulled through all sorts of unsavory characters with their abilities awoke. Remind me to tell you about Gary and the Orc one day. Now, as Amelia mentioned, I used to be the librarian. I retired just after you were born, Tilly, as your grandma and I decided that with your mum not being around and us both getting older, we would stay at Pages and Company, especially as we didn't know whether you'd turn out to be a book wanderer. Amelia had now finished her phone call and was tapping her fingernails quietly but insistently on her desk. When Dandad posed, she broke in. Archie, do you think that... Granddad stopped her immediately and received a sharply raised eyebrow in response. I realize that there is more to this story, but I think it's best to let Tilly and Oscar get used to that basics first. Don't you agree? Granddad said, nodding his thanks. I want to hear the whole story, Tilly said instantly. This is just the basics? Oscar said under his breath, shaking his head. I think you have more than enough to wrap your head around for now, Tilly. And Amelia, if at all possible, I would appreciate you letting the librarians know that we're just going to let the underlibrary and the idea of book wandering sink in a bit with Tilly and Oscar before we go into any more details. There's nothing for you to worry about, sweetheart, he added to Tilly. She wasn't just worried until you said that, Oscar interjected, earning a hard stare from Grandad. Could my mum book wander? Tilly asked quietly. Oh, she could. Yes, love, Granddad answered. Tilly couldn't tell if the cracks in her heart were getting a little wider or healing ever so slightly. You're so much like her, Matilda. I don't want to make you feel like Harry Potter, but you really do have her eyes, Amelia said, and Oscar struggled to suppress a giggle. You knew her? Tilly said. Why, yes. We actually went to university together. She would have loved to hear you about your first book wanderer anyway. There will be time to reminisce soon enough. Let's go and find the reference librarian to get you two registered, she said, giving both Oscar and Tilly an encouraging nod. They were back out into the long corridor and walked a few meters down a, to a door where the number was covered by a handwritten sign in spidery letters that said, By appointment only. Ignore that, Amelia said. Much as he hates it, I am still his boss and definitely do not need an appointment to see him. She pushed the door open at the same time as knocking, and the others followed her into a room that was almost identical in shape and size to hers, but much more sparsely furnished and with walls covering 
with metal filing cabinets and shelves full of huge, uniformly sized books. I do not tolerate people opening my door without knock. Ah, good afternoon, Miss Whisper. I see you have guests, an icy voice said. You, breathed Tilly as Enoch Chuck turned round to face them. Chapter 19. Getting Lost in a Good Book Grandad nodded curtly at Chuck, who swept a handkerchief covered in what looked like soot into the top of the drawer of his desk and shut it firmly. Chuck's face contorted into a twisted version of a smile. Why, yes, Archibald, still here, still reference librarian, as you well know. I like it very much here, less politics, fewer opportunities for things to go awry. You know what it is, as you can see, Amelia is doing an admirable job. Amelia coughed. Well, as heartwarming as this reunion is, we're here on official business, Enoch. We need to get Matilda and Oscar registered as book wanderers. Of course, he said, going to pull out one of the huge volumes on his shelves. Tilly looked at Granddad in panic. He works here? She whispered, but Granddad was entirely focused on watching Chalk. Steely, Tilly steeled herself. Why are you here? She croaked. Everyone turned to look at her. What did you say, girl? Chalk said. Tilly swallowed and thought of a look of righteous indignation 